What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Elizabeth. This is The Joyful Sojourn, and this video is all about Archer and Olive. I have placed several orders in the last two months, and small orders. I've got a pre-order. I've got a one-off notebook. I have the creativity case, finally. Um, I get to look through that. And then I have my order from the fall, the Attic Treasures release. So we're going to go through all of this stuff today. If you are new to Archer and Olive, they are primarily a bullet journal company, but they are coming out with way more products, including accessories and bags, um, fountain pens and inks, stamps, and then their uh, different pen types. We've got acrylographs that are paint pens and calligraph pens. They are probably my favorite brush tip pen. And they have gel pens as well. So they, they're growing their stationary pantry, their collection. Can I say that? A stationary pantry. Oh my gosh, you guys. Can you imagine a stationary pantry in your house? <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay. I digress. I'm just very excited about stationary things. So let's get into my order. Oh, I am an affiliate for Arch and Olive. So if any of these things are of interest to you, please shop my link down below. Joyful 10 will save you 10% off of your purchase, but I did purchase all of these myself and you will always get my honest opinion. So shall we get into it? Let's start from the light, the latest or the, no, the furthest away order into the most recent. And we have to start with this one. This is a Doc Red journal. It's an A5 size, but it's in collaboration with Amy Tangerine. I have to say a few things about this notebook. Um, so standard A5, 192 ultra thick pages, 160 GSM, and it is dot grid and it's the vegan leather. But this notebook is so much more. There was a mock-up of this journal on the Archer and Olive website, and this was available for pre-order, which I didn't even know that they did that. Maybe it's once in a blue moon, or maybe this was so different, they decided to pre-order. But I pre-ordered this because when I saw it, I just like had, I just had like an emotional response to it. Like I needed it in my life. And I know that sounds a lot, like too much about a notebook, but when you see it, you'll see why. So this notebook, when they showed the mock-up, it was a journal that had paint smeared all over it. It had Scrabble tiles glued down on it and these like felt or like glitter letters glued down onto it. It was three dimensional and it was just like had stuff all over. It was just like totally painted out. Like you could tell Amy Tangerine took a notebook and just painted it and put all these things down and was like, here you go, here's my mock-up. And there was something so beautiful about it. So I ordered it and I had no idea what it would really feel like when it was opened, what it like, what it would look like in my hands. It was very clear on the pre-launch order that it's not going to have three dimensional items on it. You're not actually going to have tiles glued down, but it's gonna have the impact of it. And y'all, they were not lying. Are you guys ready for this? Look at this notebook. Now, I am typically a very neutral notebook and planner person because the inside of my pages tend to be explosive with color and stickers and pens and washi tape and I really go ham on the inside so I like the the front of it to be very demure very cutesy and um but I saw this one and I I felt freedom and the reason I felt freedom is because when it comes to notebooks I'm always afraid I'm going to ruin them like the notebook itself is so beautiful. Anything I do will only make it ugly. And that is a terrible mindset, you guys. Terrible. Because anything that you create is beautiful. Because it came from your mind and because you did it. And when you did it, it probably felt really good. You were either getting out anger and it was a way to kind of like let it out or hurt. Let that hurt out. If you felt love, you, you know, doing something lovey, like it, it's an expression of who you are and your experiences. And to say like, oh, I don't want to ruin a beautiful notebook, notebook is so, it's such a lie. Don't believe that. Anything you do in your notebooks is beautiful because it's yours. And so when I saw this, I felt like I knew this would be a notebook that I could really explore my creativity in because the front was already so colorful and just destroyed by art and like mixed media. I felt like it was already broken in. And so I bought it 
And here it is in person. And again, the mock-up had actual tiles on it. You can see here, this is just a vegan leather cover. It is not three-dimensional. But my gosh, you guys, can you see how perfect the print on this cover is? This is flat, but it looks like paint smear, schmear, spackle, just spread on the notebook. If like this just, this inspires me. It inspires me to try new things and to bring out my inner artist. I think it's so pretty. And even like this, which is not three dimensional, the shine and the bright, because it has a shine to it, and it's got the shadowing around it. It looks three-dimensional. This looks way cooler and in person than I was expecting, even based off of the mock-up that had everything glued on top. So my hope with this is that because it's so artistic, create beautiful things and shine bright, that this would be something that I can just destroy with art. So let's open it up. So it is a classic A5 Archer and Olive notebook. The polka dots on the left side are holographic. Did not realize that, that's cool. We have our name page and then we have our dot grid pages per the usual. We have two black bookmarks with the ampersand on one of them. And of course at the back, we always have a pen loop and a pocket folder. And there's just something about this one that I just I, I just want to get into. And I wanna explore inks, I wanna explore stamps, I wanna explore junk journaling. I just wanna play in this thing. And so many of my notebooks and my journals and my planners serve a function that has to do with productivity. And I wanna have a notebook that is not about productivity and more about um, the things that, I don't know, that cultivate joy within me. And that creative space is something that is very near and dear to my heart. And I feel like this kind of is already broken in. I think I already said that, but it's broken in for me. So you guys are for sure, at the very least on Instagram, I don't know how much I'll share this on YouTube, but you will see me use this soon. I think I'm going to use this all through the fall, experimenting with different creative things. And just for the sake of being creative, not because I need a layout for my to-do list or a journal, or not a journal, a calendar spread. This is going to be more of like a creative journal for me. So if you guys want to see more of me using creative journals, let me know. Specifically, if you want to see more of this on YouTube, I am definitely going to post reels because it's just easier to consolidate into a minute and a half. But if you are someone that would be interested in just putting me on and breaking out a coloring book and coloring with me while I explore the pages of this notebook, please let me know if that's something that you want to see on my YouTube channel. So this is the Amy Tangerine collab. I don't know if it's still available. I would think so. It's a new release, but it was pre-order. So I will try to find that information before this video goes live and I will update the description box. So if you are looking for something like this, I mean, how cool would it be if like a ton of people bought this notebook and this was a place where like once a month we got together and we just destroyed a couple pages in here. We practiced our lettering. We tried a new stamp set. We tried adding water to some of our pens like to do a watercolor effect. Like what if we had a notebook that was just for playing? I just wanna bring back play, you guys. Um, so I'm gonna do this in this journal in this fall. And I don't know, maybe there'll be more like this in the future. Or if not, if I fill this guy up in the fall, then in the new year, I could find another kind of smoother textured journal and create something um, on the front that's kind of like this, but maybe it has like joy across the front or something like that. You know, maybe we could do like DIY, like paint your own notebooks in the new year. I don't know, I'm just thinking, this just inspires me. So I'm excited to get going with this guy. Let me know what you think. Uh, the next collab journal that I bought as a one-off was Mark's collab. This notebook is called Marked, 
and it was in the professional collection release this summer. I am a huge fan of Mark's. I don't even want to say fan. I kind of feel like we're friends. I hope that he would say we were friends. Um, I've been following him for a while and we got to meet at Go Wild and I just, the conversation was so easy and he was actually a huge support to me. Uh, I reached out to him when he changed his handle from Men Who Bullet to Mark Your Pages. At that time, I was over a year thinking about changing my handle from EJ Joyful Plans to The Joyful Sojourn. And so I messaged him and I said, like, tell me about what the process was like for you. Do you regret it? What are things I should be aware of changing my handle? And he was my go-to person for the entire process. And being able to meet him in person at Go Wild was bomb. And I think we're both in our 40s and I just feel like we get the same references and like he could be my big brother. So um, when I heard that he was doing a collab with Archer and Olive, it's a dream for many of us. And I was so proud of him. I just felt so proud. I knew I was going to buy it no matter what. But incredibly excited when I actually liked the choices that he made. And some of these elements I also would put in a notebook if I was designing one myself. So this is the Marked Journal. And this guy is sexy. This journal is very sexy. Yes, I'm saying a, a notebook is sexy. I just feel like this is lovely. This has the buckram material cover. And I think this might be the first journal I've ever purchased that has the buckram cover. And it is phenomenal. I feel like it's perfect. It doesn't catch fingerprints. It's not super porous like a linen material, but it has the look of it and a little bit of texture. You can just tell this thing is like built, you know, it just feels like sturdy. I don't know what it is. Um, so he collaborated with Archer and Olive. This notebook I think comes in a B5 and an 8x8, so three different sizes, and I believe it's still available on the website. Um, so let's talk about this. So he created this pattern and depending on how the light hits it, the lines are black, but they kind of look like a blood red or like a really, yeah, really dark red. It's pretty rad. The cover itself has uh, really like a dark charcoal color and then the pattern is black. But again, it looks kind of red sometimes. Um, the pattern also includes different kind of Easter eggs, different shapes that naturally happened when he was creating the design. And Mark did post on his YouTube channel what the whole process was like designing this. And it's really fascinating. If you are a stationary lover and you just care about the nuts and bolts like I do, watch Mark's video. I will link it down below actually because I want to I want to make sure you guys see it. But he talks about the whole evolution, the design of this notebook from the beginning to the end. And I remember at some point in that video, he had shown a mock-up of a design and I was like, "Oh my gosh, no." No, no, no. I messaged him. I'm like, I'm so glad you didn't do that. Um, and then talking about the different textures, like the landing on Buckram was genius. It's just, this notebook is near perfect. Near perfect. I could have designed it myself, Mark. Well done. Let's look at the inside gold grid pattern. And this is, this is super, it's like masculine, but would not look masculine with a woman holding it. You know, I could give this to Josh and he would use it and feel like a tough guy. Um, and I can use it and not feel like, oh, it's a, I don't know. It's too masculine for me. It is very beautiful. Um, so when you open it up, we have our gold grid and Again, the 160 GSM. Now, there are several elements that are different in this journal compared to every other Archer and Olive journal we have ever seen. The first is this key on the back of the front page. And a lot of people kind of see this as wasted space. I posted a reel on my Instagram page about how I created a pocket on here just to use this. That idea was originally from Jess from Joshi Corinne. She is also a genius. Definitely be following her. But, um, you know, it's a way to use this page because this is always kind of awkward because there's additional glue here that makes these two pages a little wonky. And that just has to be that way. So, um, you know, I show one of the ways you can fix that is creating a pocket. But Mark is giving us some functionality by giving us a key. 
And what's cool about this is you can use it for the different icons. If you actually use the bullet journaling method, like the formal method with the different icons that symbol like the movement of your tasks, you can put that key here. I think a lot of people who bullet journal aren't actually using the bullet journal method. They're just creative journaling and creating their own spreads. So you could also use this as an index for your calendar pages. The other thing that is different when we get, let's get into like the center. Let's just get right into the center. We have marked pages, which is another such a great play on words and names. These pages are marked in a couple different ways. First, there are marks on the page, a dash here, a triangle here, dash here, dash, triangle, dash, and these are marking the page with the third and half um, lines on the page so that you don't have to be counting your dots. So this line or this dash across is a third of the page. This dash across is the other third. So did I say that right? First third, and then you have the second third, and then the third third. <laughs> and then the arrow is pointing to the half mark across the page. Same thing down at the bottom. We've got a dash, the triangle, the dash, and this is separating it again into thirds and the half mark on the page. Those icons are so small. They really don't get in the way of the design of the pages. So if you're someone that like doesn't want to know the markers, I'm telling you, they're very, they're easy to see if you want to see them and they kind of disappear if you don't. But I think adding those notches is excellent. The other thing he added is page numbers, y'all. And what's cool about these page numbers, the font color or that not the font, the boldness of the text is not bold. It, it's very, very subtle. So if you want page numbers, can you guys even see that? Can you see what page number that is? In person, I can see it clear, but it is very faint, very minimalist. So it doesn't get in the way of the design. And the size of the number is perfectly size to be in alignment with the last dot on this corner so it's not getting in the way of design of the page as far as like the dot spacing goes so absolutely wonderful um changes that mark has made for his collab and it's just a really great notebook if i didn't have the amy tangerine notebook for creative stuff i probably would move into this one because i like that the markers are already on there and I like the page numbers. But since I have that one and it is so creative and it's just inspiring me, I'm going to use that for creative. I'm not sure how I'm going to use this one yet. The page numbers make it really handy for like daily planning. And I've been wanting to try out the dot grid for my daily planner notebook. I'm currently using a graph grid notebook from Hemlock and Oak. But I want to transition over to the dot grid soon. And that notebook is I'm starting to run out of, like I'm getting to the end of that notebook. So um, I want to have this guy ready because I think having the page numbers might be really nice. Because if I'm using it for daily planning, I could go to the front here. And maybe if really significant things happen in this uh, time period, let's say... I don't know, Esther, well, she's not going to lose a tooth. What could happen in a three-month period while she's two years old? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Her first haircut, I don't think that's going to happen. But let's say somewhere in my daily planning, Esther gets a haircut, um, and that happens on page 62. I can go over here and put in my index or my key, I can put page 62 or 62, Esther's first haircut. I mean, that's another use for this is it could be entirely for like life with Esther. <gasps> oh, like memory keeping. Ooh, ideas because the page numbers are really handy. If I'm not using a planner and I'm making my own daily pages, the page numbers could be really handy. Okay, so th that might be how I use this guy um, soon. Oh. <gasps> Pretty. So that is the marked notebook. Again, this came in three sizes. They didn't release it in 
every size Archer and Olive makes, just in the most popular of sizes and the ones that Mark likes the most. So A5, B5, and the 8x8. The 8x8 was super ten tempting, you guys. Very, very tempting. But I, I managed to steer clear. Okay, so let's open up. I already cut it, but I have not actually opened up. Let's open up my attic treasures order and then we will do the creativity case last if you're hanging with me and you're waiting for the creativity case so i'm moving this out of the way so i can pull out my invoice so i picked up we went with oh yeah i forgot uh okay so i'm gonna move this stuff out of the way I have not seen these yet. I'm very excited. I love the calligraph pens. I just do. Um, I'm comfortable with them. I love the tips. I love the colors. I just think they are gorgeous. So uh, especially in the fall colors, I, I had to get them. So this was the latest fall release, the Attic Treasures release. And I got the calligraphs. I got one of the notebooks in a TN size, Traveler's Notebook size, and then I got two of the stamp sets, which I'm really tempted to stamp for you guys today. Should we do some stamping? We'll see how long this video goes after looking at these items first. So the notebook I picked up is, gosh, the packaging, like look at this, highly, highly giftable. I think everybody should be more creative, and if you feel the same way, then I would recommend this Christmas, everybody <laughs> giving notebooks and pens. Get everybody a journal for Christmas, because my gosh, how gorgeous is that? Attic Treasures 2024. And then look, so the other boxes we've seen so far have the traditional top and bottom, but look, this one has that like open, open drawer experience. So I picked the vintage camera. I thought this was so classy. So, so classy. And as you can see, I am a minimalist cover fan, but yeah. I knew that I had Mark's notebook with that kind of charcoal gray, but when I saw this one, I was like, it's a lighter gray and it's more of a linen material and it has a stamped vintage camera. It's different, right? It's different. It's a, it's a different notebook, okay? Josh is probably going to look at this and go, don't you already have a gray notebook? And I'll say, that's not the point, Josh. It's not about whether or not I have another gray notebook. It's that this one's vegan leather. The other one's buckram. The other one's a collab. This one has a vintage camera on it, and they're totally different sizes. That's what I would say. So this is the TN Vintage Camera, 144 pages, but we still have the dot grid and the 160 GSM. This is so pretty. The TNs are my like low key favorite notebook. I don't know what it is. I've slowly been collecting TNs, um, but I haven't been using them and I need to be using them. I just, I like the idea of the TN. I like how it fits in my hand. I like that this easily fits in pretty much all of my purses. I even have like a fanny pack, like a sling crossbody bag that this would fit into with ease. And yeah, <gasps> look at that. So no matter what size you get, that interior design, that gold foil is going to be the film, camera film. And then we have our dot grid. Let's look at the bookmark. Bookmark is going to be a nice silver or gray, depending on, it looks like silver because it's got a little sheen to it with the ampersand. And then of course in the back we have the pocket and the pen loop. This size is just really good for on the go. It's good for taking to the gym. Let's say you have a planner or a notebook where you're tracking wellness, like health and wellness. This could be the guy that you destroy taking to the gym, that you write down you know, your fitness stats or the number of reps that you did or your treadmill time and how many laps you did. And then you go home and you transfer it into maybe a larger planner. Um, it's that kind of notebook. Um, it's just so portable. And yeah, I, I need to find a use for this. The other thing is, let's flatten this out. 
The TN, if you open it up, looks real similar. It's either the same or very similar to one page in the 8x8 notebook. So if you're someone that has been exploring the 8x8 notebook and you like that size, but maybe you want to try something smaller, you could get the TN and experiment using your 8x8 designs on one page of your eight by eight, try it in this because this looks like the same. I might need to confirm that, but it looks like an eight by eight on two spreads. So that is the TN. Don't know how I'm gonna use it yet, but I know that I want to. I just feel like this is something I could see taking to a coffee shop. Like maybe this is something that, maybe I put a brush, brush lettering pen in here and just whenever I know I'm going to have some downtime when I'm out and about, instead of playing on my phone, maybe I just practice my brush lettering in something like this. Um, that might be a really, really good way for me to get some practice, do something creative away from my cell phone and, you know, use mustache. So that is the TN in the vintage camera design. Let's look at the pens next. And I don't know if anybody from Arch and Olive is going to be watching this, but this notebook was in, I think the winter box, subscription box last year. And this is one of my most used Archer and Olive products. There's something about the twin loop and the size of this. It feels like a B6. I wanna say it's a B6 size with the Archer and Olive dot grid paper that works for me. So I can easily just, you know, take the loop off and I'm not going to show you some of my notes, but uh, I have really just used this for anything and everything. Like if I'm on the phone and I need to write something down, I'll scribble something down. If I have a pen that I'm not sure if it's dried out, I'll, you know, do pen swatches to get it working again. This thing I've just used for anything and everything. It's my favorite. You guys, I'm going to say it. This is my favorite notebook for like everyday use. And I hope, 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 hope that they make more of these because it's it's a different niche than the bound book style. There's just something, oh, just even being able to flip it over like this and um, keep the pages all together, just it just works. So if anybody on the design team is watching, I would love to do or see another B6 sized dot grid spiral. It's just so good. So let's use this for um, swatching these guys. Attic treasures. Look at these colors, guys. So freaking beautiful. We are going to use these all this fall. The difference between the calligraph and the acrylograph pens is the well, one, the ink type, but also the tips are totally different. So acrylograph pens are paint pens. Those are the ones that you got to press down and shake to get them moving. And the calligraph pens are water-based. I think they're a lot easier to work with. They are dual tipped. I'm trying to keep these together because the pens are not going to come labeled, but the packaging will include the label so that you can um, play around and label them yourself however you want. Um, and hopefully these, I think, I think these are gonna be in order. So I'm gonna try to keep these all together. But water-based and they're brush tip, but we have two different brush styles. So we have the really big brush tip that is good for coloring in large spaces or if you want a really bold and chunky uh, writing. And then we have the finer tip, which is better for I'd say like everyday brush lettering. This would be the type of pen that I would put in that TN uh, pen loop and practice my different types of lettering, specifically with a tip like this. So the first color we have is, okay, so they call it broad and fine. And actually, I think we should add the colors as we go because I just know Elizabeth's gonna have a hot mess with this if I don't do it. I have been swatching my pens through the course of the summer and I've actively avoided swatching my Arch and Olive pens because I know half of them don't have names on them and they're no longer in their packaging. So I'm gonna have to, it's going to take me hours 
to regroup them and figure out what collections they were from, what the colors are, and I just haven't had uh, capacity yet. So that is coming. So to, in order to avoid the drama from that, I'm going to go ahead and label these as we go. So the first one is Deep Lavender, and I've seen people label these different ways. They'll either do like the full name um, underneath the Archer and Olive logo, or they'll do it this way. I kind of like doing it above or below horizontally, like across, because if I'm going to, yeah, if I pull out a pen, I'm probably going to be looking for the, the print. So this is Deep Lavender. Should we zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this better? Let's zoom in a little bit. How's that? Can we see it okay? Okay, so this is Deep Lavender. So I'm still working on control. So that is Deep Lavender. My goodness, that is lovely. The next one we have is Mulberry. I have a feeling this color collection is going to be very popular. I'm doing this, I feel like maybe I'll get better the more I go. I'm always dry, uh, I have to find my rhythm when I'm doing this, when I haven't brush lettered in a while. The next color we have is Acorn. I feel like these pens are really good for beginners with brush lettering. Very forgiving. Vermilion. Mm hmm. Okay, next is Deep Blush. Next we have Cottage Moss. Pretty. What's your favorite color so far? Do I need to zoom out just a little bit? What do you guys think? What's your favorite color so far? The next one we have is Barn Owl. Interesting. I used to have the weirdest thing about owls, as in like I was really into them. And I kind of, well, I guess, man, when was this? Like the early 2000s, I think owl things were like very hip. Right now, ooh, that's nice. Right now we're in a mushrooms being very hip like as a decorative and like design thing it's mushrooms well let me tell you early in the 2000s it was owls and I like went hard for it because I was on an old road driving through Oregon with a friend and we actually hit an owl it was really dark you guys it was perched literally in the middle of a like not a freeway, but like a, not a, and not a frontage road. What is it when a country road, but it was like with a faster, um, speed, speed limit. And so there was nothing I could do to, to, to like avoid it. It was really dark, like middle of the night, middle of Oregon. And yeah, we hit it. It actually messed up like the undercarriage of my car. This is artichoke. And after that point, I kind of, I don't know if it's like, I wanted to pay respect to the, to the owl. Oh, and we knew that it was an owl because part of like the plastic of the undercarriage of my car like dropped and we had to pull over and we stopped at this weird motel. I mean, it was like a vibe. It was like a horror movie. We stopped at this hotel that had weird, um, like tchotchkes and like little figurines and stuff in the lobby and we had to wait there while someone came to look at the vehicle. And when he looked underneath it, he saw feathers, you guys. <laughs> so we're like, that was definitely, definitely an owl. We thought it was, and it definitely was. So anyways, every time I see owl stuff like that, um, barn owl color. Wait, how do we spell artichoke? Art I'm talking too much. Artichoke. Um, saw the barn owl name for that pen color. I immediately was taken back to Pacific Northwest Elizabeth, where I used to live before Texas. And that owl, may it be resting in peace. All right, two more pens, guys. Thanks for hanging with me. We are on to Rosemary or Rosemary, you know, depending on how you want to say it. The last one, what? 
girl, you're going to make me write chrysanthemum in uh, brush lettering? Okay, this is good practice, guys. That's good practice. Chrysanthemum is the last color. I do have the Creativity Case, the new version. It came out in two colors. It came out in black and then a really pretty green. I wanted the green one, but it was sold out and I was feeling some kind of way. And so I went ahead and bought the black one. So I'm gonna share with you guys the black one today, but no, um, ooh, that's pretty. This is the kind of yellow I've really been into lately. Can you see it? It's like a dirty mustard yellow, very pretty. Let's see if Elizabeth can remember how to spell chrysanthemum and make it look nice. Can we do it? Oh, I'm nervous, so C. Oh, no, there is an H. H, R, Y, S, A, that was not a good A, N, T, H, I'm cheating guys just so you know it is written on the back of the box M U M okay well that wasn't <laughs> wasn't the best brush lettering but man I'm proud of myself <laughs> so these are the colors deep lavender mulberry acorn vermilion deep blush cottage moss barn owl artichoke rosemary and chrysanthemum I think this palette these colors for fall is perfection so I am so glad to have these in my collection I'm so glad that I labeled them right now I know that it took a little bit more time thank you for bearing with me I'm not even gonna put these back in the box because we are now going to transition over to oh are we gonna do the stamps let's look at the stamps and then we will get to the creativity case and I think we will just open this guy up. And I've been trying to remember to, let me zoom out, sorry guys. I'm all over the place. I've been trying to remember to bring a box of Esther's baby wipes out here because I hear baby wipes are actually really great for cleaning stamps, like a quick clean. And obviously, if you don't have kids and you don't have baby wipes, maybe that's not the best option. But for me that buys them in bulk at Costco, having a massive Kirkland baby wipe pack in here is very easy. So I think if I knew that it was easy to clean stamps, I would break out stamps more, more frequently in my planning and creative journey. And so I need to remember to bring out baby wipes because then I'll do more stamping. Okay, so I have here, I think there were three stamp sets. I tried to watch my budget. I was trying to stay like as close to $100 as possible. Um, so I got two stamp sets from the uh, Attic Treasures launch. The first one is called Attic Treasures and the other is called Snapshot Box and that is in the like vintage camera theme. This is Attic Treasures. And again, the packaging, highly giftable, absolutely gorgeous. And what's cool about these sets is it's kind of an all-in-one. So if you're new to stamping and you don't have ink, you don't have a block for sticking the stamps to, you don't have to worry about that. If you buy one of the stamp sets, it's a set. So it comes with black ink, it comes with a, an acrylic block, and then it also comes with the stamps. So that is really just a great like entry level moment with stamping. So the Attic Treasures set is the autumnal one that's got the leaves, acorns, you know, more leaves, pumpkins. We've got like a corner piece and then we have these cool frames. So fun. A paw print, a blackbird or are they sparrows? No, blackbird crow and some flowers as well. Very, very pretty. I love the wind blown leaf. If you like this pattern or Attic Treasures collection has a journal that has this on it. I want to do all of them, but I also just have this little guy here. Maybe we'll just take a couple. Should we just take a couple? Let's take a couple. Um, very curious about, what do we want to use? 
I want to use the wispy leaf. So let's see how that works. And I always kind of just like rub it on my skin, kind of try to remove any, any residue that might be on the stamp um, that might prevent it from picking up ink. So I'm just kind of rubbing it, rubbing it. And then let's stick it on the block pad. And because this ink is, this square is smaller, then the stamp itself, I'm going to use it to dab onto the stamp versus like doing this. That's way messier than just doing this. So I'm just dabbing ink on here. And this will just be our sample from this kit. Then we'll open up the other one and do one sample from the other kit. So I think I got enough ink on there. We'll see. Let's have the leaf pattern going up this way. And I'm just giving it a good press. Hopefully I got, ooh, pretty. <gasps> that is really pretty. Very, very pretty. This makes me want to just play for a second. Shall we? Shall we just... Let's just lay some of this down. A little bit of color. I'm gonna put a little bit more ink back on here. Maybe I should have used a, a lighter pen color, but I just wanna see. This is what that other notebook is going to be for. When I want to just play with inks and stamps. I almost feel like since it's going that way, I should maybe go this way. And press, 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 press. It's so pretty. Here we can see what that ink looks like layered on top of the pen. <gasps> Oh, it's so pretty. I would have used, if I were actually doing this in a creative spread, I would have probably used a lighter color, but I love the look of inks and stamps together. So I wanted to see how that layers. That is gorgeous. So picture something like this with any of these design options. And what's cool with using these over stickers, I think they have a bigger learning curve, but once once you've bought a stamp set you have those images indefinitely so you know you can use them year after year it's not like you use a sticker once and you know it's gone stamps are reusable and you can use different colors i definitely want to play with adding different stamp or ink colors on here to create an ombre effect maybe we'll do that soon in um in one of my notebooks. And the other cool thing about it is they don't add any bulk to your pages. So if you have limited space, if it's like the end of the year and you couldn't possibly add more washi tape or more stickers to your notebooks, stamps are just a great way to add design without adding bulk to your actual notebook. Let's open up this stamp box. So fun. So we've got the ink and the block pad again. But look at these guys, friends. Put this back in here. We've got a vintage camera. We've got header dots. This week notes the story today, weekend in focus to do. And then we have headers to do today. The details remember uh, important. Then we've got fun icons, a pencil, a ruler, two sizes of paper clips, a little Polaroid camera frame, uh, scissors, and then just various sizes of or two sizes of the camera a larger polaroid and then some like special stars and like textures absolutely gorgeous oh and of course these tabs which are a great way to set up your headers so you could put like these words inside these tabs these ones that aren't solid you can color in so it like matches your layouts your journals lots of options with those tabs and a fun way to do a box in a slightly different shape. 
I think we have to look at the camera because that is the raddest. So I'm gonna peel off the smaller camera. And I also wanna pull off the, ooh, what if we just, let's just have fun for a second. I'm also gonna pull off this little Polaroid guy. Again, I'm gonna just rub off the, any like film or anything from the stamp. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go up my arm. It's super awkward looking, guys. I'm do that off camera. Add some wornness to it. And I think it would be fun to do some layering just real fast. Just let's just play with this for a second. So I'm going to lay the Polaroid down first. And add some ink to it. Like so. Is that enough? Hopefully that's enough. And I'm going to do it kind of wonky. Press it down. Lift it up. Ooh, that is cool. I like it. Clean this guy off. And throw it back onto the sheet. And then... The ink is still a little bit wet, but I'm going to take this guy. Yep, and just take a piece of paper, actually. Stick the camera back on it. And ink it up. ink this guy up really good. This is going to be mostly ink. It looks like the negative spaces are just in the like frame of the camera. You really want to make sure that's inky. And I'm going to put this piece of paper over this box like so. I'm going to put the camera right here. Press it down really good. Lift it up and lift up the Polaroid. Isn't that cool? Look at the effect of that. You guys are going to see so much more stamps from me. How fun is that? It's so easy to create a layered look if you just cover one of your stamps and then stamp on top of it and then it's perfectly crisp up against this guy. So pretty. So that is the, what did they call this one? This was the Snapshot Acrylic Stamp Set. If you want to explore stamping with me, let's go guys, let's just do it. So again, that's what this collection looks like. And of course you get your set of items to come with it. Let's talk about the creativity case. This video is way longer than I was planning. I feel like my videos lately have been really long and it's because I'm trying new things. There's new products and I really want to make sure that you guys are getting all the information and all of the creative inspo. Look at that. How pretty. Okay, the last item is the creativity case and I'm going to have to move quickly through this one because this is a real life friends my mom's coming over we are going to have dinner and we're gonna watch the bachelorette men tell all okay so real life guys so this is I think we'll have to zoom out just a little bit this is the kind of 2.0 version of the creativity case I don't have the first version so I can't compare it for you Obviously, if I did, I would, because y'all know I love a comparison game. But this is the Creativity Case. It has kind of like a fabric um, woven crossbody strap with really nice, sturdy gunmetal um, 
lobster claw, and this is a re removable strap. So if you just wanna carry it, you can with the handle. And I did hear that the handle has been reinforced differently before. I think it had a little bit of movement on either side. This is actually sewn in, so the handle is not going to, you know, it's not gonna move, move on you. So let me see if there's any additional information on here. I haven't used it yet. Vegan leather black. The green one had, I think, more of a like texture to it. And the strap was a like mosaic patterned. It was so pretty. I might have to try to get my hands on that. Let's take a look at the inside. The idea behind the creativity case is that you can take your journaling and your tools and stuff on the go. So if you are super inspired by watching people, you can put everything you need into this bag and then take it to a coffee shop or take it to the park and you have everything all in one shot. Ooh, I really have not explored this that much. So I'm excited. The first thing I wanna do is test the different sized journals you can put in here. I have, of course, the, actually, I don't wanna put in the ones that are in boxes. This is a B5. This was part of the desk aesthetic box and it is literally, I think my favorite, oh, man, can I say that? It might be my favorite just aesthetically. It's like my favorite color. I love the stationary supplies on the front. It's got the ruler grid. Anyways, not about this. The point of me pulling this was to see how it would fit. And here you can see it fits a B5 just fine. Look, fits a B5 on the other side as well. Looks like this can pop out. So if we take it out, let's first test the number of journals we can fit in here. So we have a B5, this is an A5, and then we have this notepad. And I think depth wise, that is as deep as you're gonna wanna go as far as notebooks go. So I'd say you can fit three notebooks in here from B5 down. It's not gonna fit an eight and a half by 11 if you have maybe a larger planner. Here's my hemlock and oak planner. Obviously that's gonna fit. This is my fitness planner. This is a mini Laurel Denise planner. That fits easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So the mini Laurel Denise planners will fit. A classic dismount planner will fit based on this and the B5 size. I know, again, a big will not fit but everything classic and smaller will fit. So hope that that is helpful as far as sizes, um, sizes of journals go. And if you don't need or want to use this guy, I mean, this is actually a really nice insert and you wanted to just put pens here, you can stack it to the brim. Let's see how it fits. How three notebooks fit with the pen insert attached. So B5, A5, and A5 notepad. So this is not going to lay flat. Hope you can see that. But it will still zip. So it'll be wonky when you open it, but you can fit three notebooks and still have this in here. Let's add pens to it just to double check. As far as weight goes, it's really not that heavy. It also has some extra padding, so it feels soft. Um, let's move these guys out of the way. Since we have our calligraph pens, let's go ahead and stick these on here. And because these are longer, I like that we're able to see truly the biggest pens we can fit in here. I'm spreading these out because I wanna have enough to put on both sides from this collection. So see what happens packing wise when we have pens on both sides in 14, 15. So we have 30 pen slots. That's actually very, very generous. And the fact that you can take this off and just move this out of the way and set it down on your desk is really nice. So you can easily flip back and forth, like maybe have your more functional pens on one side, pencils, you know, stuff like that. Everyday pens on one side, and then you have your more decorative art pens on this side. Let me grab an acrylograph, just so you guys can see what an acrylograph would look like in there. Easy.
This is a nice like thickness too. Let's try a Crayola Super Tip. Those are a little bit thinner and they fit just fine like that. Grab a Tombow. Tombow fits just fine as well. So I'm very, very happy with the look of this. So once we have some pens in it, let's go ahead and add three notebooks back in. It's gonna be awkward, let's see. Okay, so once you add pens to it, it's gonna stiffen things up and you're not gonna be able to fold it down. Let's take a notebook out. It will fit two notebooks. Sorry, we've got stacks, stacks on stacks of notebooks going on. Oh, dang it. We're okay, guys. We just have boxes everywhere. So when we take that out and we have two notebooks, I think this was 192 pages. Um, it's fine. So I would say two notebooks max if you're planning to pack this um, sleeve for pens. And it zips very easy. Plenty of room. Let's move these guys out of the way and check out the other elements here. And why don't we take this guy off? Um big open pocket here and we have loops up at the top for washi tape i don't really travel with washi tape um but you have two straps here that you can use that way if you want to i would probably be more likely to use it for additional pens because you can easily just clip a pen on and then have it be underneath this sleeve it will move around a little bit but that's probably how i would use this i'm a big pen person but if I wanted to grab a washi tape example, so we just unsnap this, loop it on, and then snap it back down. Now these, if you get the thicker ones, are gonna be taking up space. So keep that in mind. You could probably put four washi tapes across the top two if you keep them kind of slid all the way to the side and it will still fit the B5 and the A5. So maybe you wanna limit your washi tape or you could also go this way. If you're not taking a B5 and you have one notebook, you could do this and then have your washi tape. That would be probably the better way to do it if you are a big washi tape person. Put your A5 this way or, um, oh, you know what, I should grab we should grab a traveler's notebook. Oh yeah, that's fine. They're the same height. So you could add a traveler's notebook as well. If you go this way, then you can do all your washi tape at the top. We'll just fill it all the way up. Move it all the way. The adhesive that seals this thing came undone on mine. <laughs> it's okay though. I'll just have to glue it again. So I think we've got room for one more. Okay. Will the big guy fit? No. Let's take the small one off. See if the big one will fit. Nope, still too big. This fits if I take something off. How about maybe do this guy? There we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven variable sizes. Um, before that, I was able to put two and could probably fit another one like this in place of this. So that would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I would say seven to nine washi rolls per strip. And then you would just need to orient your journal this way so you have room up at the top. Esther's here, hold on. Okay, so you guys, I gotta get to my baby. Okay, I gotta move a little bit more quickly now. We have this open pocket here. This is going to fit your Archer and Olive sticker sheets. You could probably put more washi tape here oh wait you guys um this what can i use to show you this actually goes all the way down this top pocket is the full length of this pocket was not expecting that so your tns will actually fit in the top two pockets wow could you put a tn here or is it a little bit tight? It's a little bit tight, but you can. So if you wanted to do your notebooks here, B5, A5, you could do, you could do the TN in here. And then how would that work with this guy? 
Maybe you wouldn't want to button it. You just leave it loose. And then let's see. Oh yeah, it'll zip just fine. So you could put more notebooks in here. Let me see if this pocket fits the A5. It does fit the A5. <gasps> Interesting. So you could put a notebook in the top section. Now, if you wanted to put a notebook in the top section, could you do two, a B5, a um, notepad, and a TN here, and then close it? Yes, so wait, let's actually be sure. Yep, that fits, and it doesn't look like the zipper is like stretching. Let's see if it'll fit with pens on the pen thing. No. So you can go like bananas with your carrying your notebooks, or you can take a couple notebooks and your pens and then maybe put some flat things here. I also have some, let's see, Archer and Olive scissors. That would work here. You could put these in. I'd be careful putting them in, <clears throat> in a pouch like this because they're gonna stab the mesh. I suppose you could put them here. Let's carefully see. Nope, those are gonna fall off. So the last place, of course, would be if you wanted to hook them on the loop. That would be the best place, I think, for scissors. So if you're not a big washi tape person, you could like loop your scissors on here. Maybe tuck them into the pocket just for safekeeping. So wow, there's a lot of things you can throw in here. I have a, another case that's kind of creative like this that I would love to do a comparison video with. So I'll have to do that obviously at some point at another time. And we can actually pack this thing, this thing full and then take all of those items that this was packed with, pack them in the other case and see, see if it carries the same amount of stuff. I think this is a really well designed bag. I think it fits a lot of stuff. The depth of it is really nice. You can fit a lot of notebooks. I think being able to carry more than two is really nice. I don't know how many people would do that, but I think the avid journaler might maybe want to carry a book, like maybe a reading book and a journal. You could do that and still have so much room for pens, washi, scissors. You know, if you wanted to throw in correction tape, you could do that. This is going to add some bulk here. So maybe, maybe you put all of your pens at the top. There's any number of ways that you can redesign this to fit everything that you're looking for. I like the idea of putting the A5 this way so that you can have your washi tape at the top. I don't think I would have thought of that looking at this bag on the website, but seeing it here, it actually makes a lot of sense. So I think we got to call it a video, friends, because my husband was just rapping at the door. I think we're done, friends. Here is everything I got from Archer and Olive recently. We have the creativity case, the Attic Treasures pens that we did the swatch of, um, the Attic Treasures pens. We've got the stamps and then we have some really fun new notebooks that I cannot wait to play with. If you want to follow me on the creative journey, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Come hang out with me over on Instagram. My handle is the joyful sojourn. And if you have any questions about any of these products, I would be happy to answer those questions. So leave me a comment, leave me a like, let me know if you want to see more creative explorations here on my channel and subscribe if you want to hang out with me again. Until next time, friend, God bless you. God bless you and keep you do something creative today and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.